A topic of heavy discussion in the RON community that has existed for a long time has been the question of which formable is the hardest to form. On one side, there are those that advocate for micronation since they are hard to get a good start with due to their low population count, while on the other side, there are those that argue for the British Empire and the Mongol Empire simply because they are huge in size. But remember ladies and gentlemen, size doesn't matter. Recently though, there have been a wave of new discussions, that being which formable is actually the best? This is due to Hyperant adding unique modifiers to 51 formables in the recent update that can give you a nice boost if used correctly. For example, forming Czechoslovakia gives modifiers specifically to defend, like reducing fortifications costs. This has changed some aspects, so unlike before, formables now have a big role because they actually affect your game in a significant way. A 20% combat boost can mean a huge difference in battles, but at the same time, Getting a good economy boost is also important, so you can build more troops. That begs the question of which is actually better. Well, pucker up, fellow humans. Because we shall decide today on which formables are truly the best in each stage of the game in Rise of Nations. For now, I don't know when Hyperend is gonna update, but it will probably take a few years. He doesn't really have a consistent track record. So like I mentioned before, there are only 51 formables in the game that actually has unique modifiers. And I'm only gonna include these ones when deciding on which formables are truly the best, because they are just simply superior compared to formables with no modifiers. But I am still gonna include aspects of the base formable when deciding on which ones are truly the best. These aspects include the amount of cores you get when taking into consideration how long it takes to form the formable and the terrain of the formable. Basically, its area, if it has OP mountains or OP seas, etc. But this really only matters until mid game because after that, everyone's just big. And after researching for a while, I've come to the answer that there are a lot of formables that can be considered the best in their own way. But since that wouldn't be a satisfactory answer, I will choose 5 best candidates in each part of the game, early, mid and late game. I will also give them a score from 1 to 10 in 3 different categories. 1. The modifiers itself. 2. How fast you can get the modifiers. And 3. The accessibility. Basically, how many people can profit from the modifiers. Like if it has mountains, then infantry compatibility is obviously better than tank compatibility, and if it's good for that specific country. But these criteria will change depending on which stage of the game it is. But first of all, which formables are just bad? Not like bad bad, all formables are good. But is there a formable which is just simply better than it? Like having the same modifiers but more and increased? The answer is yes, a lot. Let's go over them. The Belgium Empire gets overshadowed by a lot of formables, considering they have the same modifiers, but more, like the French Empire, Almohad Caliphate, Fatimid Caliphate, Islamic Caliphate, Akkadian Empire, you get the idea. Not to mention, it's very hard to survive as Belgium if you are an average player. Same thing can be applied to the Confederation of Northern States, East African Federation, Empire of Brazil, Korea, Mexican Empire, Nyungan Dynasty, North American Union, Tongan Empire, Carthage, Tunisia, Republic of Genoa, Republic of Venice, Mali Empire, Ghana Empire, and Songhai Emperor and many more. All these have the same problems of giving too little modifiers for the amount of effort to get the formable. They are not bad by any means for the individual country, but compared to other countries, yeah, they kinda suck. Except maybe the Mali Empire. Czechoslovakia reduces fortification cost. Yes, but they are not expensive to begin with. It's the expenses that are very costly. The East African Federation is decent, but you really only get two modifiers which again, gets overshadowed by a lot of formables. And I'm gonna ignore the unrest reduction as a good modifier, since while they are good in reducing time after taking a country, that's all there is to it. And I think it actually increases rather than decreases, so um, yeah. They don't really scale to the entire country like tax income does, or any other modifier. Every city gets affected by tax income, but unrest only affects newly conquered territories or when you get low stability. Which is why, it is time to purge some countries. Mario Empire suffers from this problem, political power doesn't really benefit nations like India that much, since while it will only be used for policies and tax income, it is way too little. The North American Union only benefits the freedom line, which alienates a lot of players. Poor Canada and Mexico. Also, the Italian Empire fucking sucks. Actually no, I am not gonna shit on Italy anymore. I have done it enough times already. It's not like it gives bonuses that barely benefit it. I mean, fascism was a big mistake for Italy already. No need to do it again. Wait a minute. The Soviet Union also suffers from the same problem, that it alienates other ideologies, and the building speed only reduces time, which isn't really a good thing unless you're building silos or something in the middle of a war. I mean, they are the Soviet Union, can't really blame them for trying to build some nukes. But the political power decrease is horrendous, since this formable is usually formed early game, and ideologies are usually better than modifiers from formables. But minus 15% isn't really the end of the world, but oh god, the Ottoman Empire? 
it's the end of the fucking world. You can form it around the end of 2019 and early 2020, but they gave a minus 35% decrease in political power. No thank you. I'd rather not exchange that for a tiny 15% increase in research output, when I can put a policy that increases it by 34%. Not to mention ideologies, and that there are other formables which have the same modifiers but are better, like the Napoleonic Empire. And that's about it. Now it's time to choose our candidates, depending on which stage of the game. We have early game, mill game, and late game. I will choose 5 potential candidates in different departments, like one being good for attack or one being good for defense, because it's kinda hard to rank on which is better when they are both so different. I will also state my reasons for choosing them, and I'm going to prioritize things that cannot be easily gained, like research output and political power gain, and modifiers that affect things universally, like ground attack which affects both tanks and infantry instead of just infantry getting buffed, or things like ideological power gain instead of communist power gain. So let's begin with early game. And the first candidate is the Frankish Empire. This is probably the best formable in the game. It has literally no weaknesses, it's super easy to form early game, it has the best gun attack bonus in the game, and it just has so many other things that just makes it so good. Another candidate is the Russian Empire, with a nice justification decrease and a huge resistance bonus, which most people don't even research in the tree, which is very useful. The infantry starting experience won't really matter if you're mainly going with tanks, but if you are an infantry main, the decrease isn't really much of a problem because there is a thing called the training, and something called touching grab. The Iberian Union is another candidate, due to it only requiring one nation, and it gives political power gain, which is huge considering it's so early on, and that is without considering its other buffs, which are also very good without any real debuffs. The North Sea Empire is another candidate for a plethora of reasons. It has no real weaknesses, it can be formed early game, it has a nice snowballing effect with justification decrease, and it can just build a lot of ships, and ships are very rare in the early game, and the more you have, the better, you will just destroy everyone. The final candidate is Almohad Caliphate. I mean, the research output is very good, considering there are only a few ways to increase it. The ground attack will mean a huge snowballing effect, and the integration speed and tax income just means faster time to conquer. And that's the candidates. The reason I didn't choose my unbiased view of the Swedish Empire, sorry I misspoke, the reason I didn't choose my very biased view of the Swedish Empire is because while it has amazing modifiers, it's super vulnerable to early game threats. One Germany or one Russia is all that is needed to kill one Sweden. And there are also probably a lot of outrage Ottoman Empire fans. I, I know it's like on the 6th place, I just think that that political power decrease is such an enormous debuff that it is not worth it compared to the Napoleonic Empire, because it can get an ideology much faster. That's early game. It's in the middle game where things get really spicy, since formables that have bad starting nations won't have to deal with the fact that now they can potentially die from a tough neighbor, since I am going by the fact that they have in fact survived and expanded. So the second criteria will just change to threats, no, not how fast you can form the formable, and the first criteria will just change to quality in exchange for quantity. Quality is more important, because you kind of have a lot of things now. The five candidates are the Almohad Caliphate or everyone that has the same modifiers, the Persian Empire, the Timurid Empire, the Qing Dynasty, and the Frankish Empire. The same reason for Almohad Caliphate as before, but it just snowballs even more because research and it increases more and more. Moving on to the Persian Empire, which is one broken motherfucker. It has amazing terrain, mountains, inland seas where it can just spam aircraft carriers, and it also has amazing infantry starting experience, which makes it one hell of an annoying defensive nation. If you see one declaring a liberation war on you, you're better off just leaving. Tanks will barely be able to do anything against fortified infantry that are fully entrenched, which are also supported by an aircraft carrier. And even if you manage to break one line with your very trained troops, they can just pop one out immediately, while you have to train. Same thing applies to the Timur Empire but it can expand more easily since it has a ground attack increase instead of an infantry starting experience, making it able to expand and it can attack Europe more easily with tanks. The Qing Dynasty and the Frankish Empire were chosen because they're just freaking development behemoths. I mean they're huge at this point and you have just so much money. But I believe the Frankish Empire is better since they have an amazing ground attack bonus even though the Qing Dynasty is huge. They will snowball so hard if they just develop for like a year, which is why I put them here. Early game and middle game was relatively easy to pick from, but it's the late game where everything gets kinda muddy. Money isn't really a problem anymore since you kinda own a lot of things, therefore quantity isn't as good as quality, which is where all the small formals will now shine, but it's still very hard to pick from everything, so I will just choose the one that have the highest percentage increase. So like the 20% ground attack increase for the Swedish Empire compared to the average 50% ground attack increase, but that really only leaves one criteria which is modifiers, and that makes it like a ranking of kind, so yeah, this is the top 5 in terms 
terms of modifiers. Which makes the Swedish Empire one candidate. I mean the ground attack alone makes it one of the best. Not to mention there's other bonuses which makes it even better. Yugoslavia is another candidate because of its huge resistance bonus. Which is now necessary more than ever. Because all the wars are just huge now and everything is and everything is just gonna cost so much more exhaustion. Which is why they'll take more when they occupy your cities. Than you needing to retake them since they have a lower resistance than you. And trust me, it's a huge deal breaker. And the Ottoman Empire is just so much better now compared to before because it doesn't have the debuff anymore. While it will lose to the Swedish Empire in just terms of 1 to 1 if the troops have the same XP, it can spam even more stuff because it has a grand starting experience increase, which makes it able to spam and spam and spam, which makes it a candidate. The British Empire is another amazing candidate because it will dominate any other naval power it faces because of the 25% starting experience increase. Not to mention its attack and defense increase. If they can dominate the seas, then they would pretty much dominate almost the entire game. And if I had to pick one final candidate, it would probably have to be the Frankish Empire. This formable has arguably the best modifiers. It has the same as the Swedish Empire, but it also has development cost reduction, which is also super huge. Like I mentioned before, it can become a behemoth in every single aspect except naval, and it will just dominate if used correctly. Also thanks for my members so I can buy more candy and just stay in my basement for even longer. And a special thanks to Texas Ball Animation.